question is from Assemblymember Berry. Thank you, Chair. I'm proud that London is a beacon of open, diverse and inclusive values and that on the whole we don't just tolerate our differences, we celebrate them. However, we know there are some individuals and groups who remain determined to divide us, to sow the seeds of hatred and spread perverse and twisted ideologies. This is damaging our society and the cohesion of our communities. Violent extremism, hate and intolerance have no place in our society, regardless of the ideology, whether it's from far-right extremists who are posing a clear and growing threat to the UK and around the world, or violent Islamist groups. The Met Police is taking this threat extremely seriously, and it's something I regularly discuss with the Commissioner and the Police. We're also working on a major new programme from City Hall. This is focusing on three core areas, safeguarding the vulnerable from radicalisation, stopping the spread of violent extremist ideologies, and strengthen the marginalised communities from extremism. As part of this work, we've just concluded the most comprehensive citywide listening exercise ever undertaken in this policy area, and the findings and recommendations will be published later this spring or early summer. After the tragic attacks in Christchurch and Sri Lanka, we've invited London faith leaders to two separate safety and security conferences at City Hall to hear expert advice from specialists on practical measures to keep their worshippers and premises safe. As well as the work we're doing from City Hall, we must also do more to tackle some of the wider societal issues at play. In London, my overriding mission is to make our city work for all Londoners and to provide access to opportunities to help people reach their full potential. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, first of all, I have to say, um, I was really sorry to hear about your recent comments about your own security situation and the threats you face. I just want to say that's, that's horrific and, and I feel you know, just very sorry for you and your family on that. Um, I wanted to ask a few further questions. Um, the recent article that came out in the Times on the 29th of March from the Commissioner Cressida Dick and Andrew Parker, who's the Director General of MI5, highlighted their concern over what they called the growing threat of violent extremism, and that's what prompted um, my question, because they especially mentioned um, the right wing there. Um, you mentioned that you are bringing out um, some work soon. That's the Countering Violent Extremism Program, um, and that's been going for a year, is that correct? Yeah, the, 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 yeah. the, 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 the research, the surveys, the meeting people, the experts, yeah. And am, am I right in thinking that, that because of the, the comments that were made um, by the Commissioner and, and MI5, that focus is more on right-wing extremism than was anticipated at the beginning of that process? Uh, no, Chair, actually. We, we, we foresaw this issue. We actually, we'd actually seen an increase in the work Preventer doing and also Channel. And so the expert team we've got doing the CVE work includes experts in far-right extremism as well. Um, because because um, if you listen to Neil Basu, what he says publicly as well as what he says privately, um, uh, there, is, there has been concern for some time. We've seen that not just with the murder of uh, Joe Cox, uh, we've seen that in relation to uh, arrests made in the recent past, but also in the, during the summer of 2017, one of those attacks in London was from a far-right extremist. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the article also mentioned several pilot projects on sharing intelligence between health and social services and the police. Are any of those pilots taking place in London? Not City Hall led. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about the government ones, but I can check and get back to you. Would you be able yeah. to? That would be really useful. Um, in the Police and Crime Committee this week, um, we uh, saw that people who are um, found guilty of racially motivated crimes are dealt with and referred to the borough command, no, the basic command unit safeguarding hubs. Um, and last year, the Police and Crime Committee met with uh, Home Office staff running Prevent, and it seemed at that time they were, it was quite early doors for them in terms of putting together effective programmes and interventions to help people change away from um, extremist right-wing views um, and deal with some of the, the vulnerabilities, potentially, that might leave them, them vulnerable to being exploited by, by right-wing extremist groups. Um, is are there going to be more details about programmes like that in your, in your extremism yeah. strategy as it comes forward? Very good. Well, what, one of the three things they're focusing on is uh, strengthening marginalised communities from extremism because uh, the, there are vulnerable people in, in all parts of our society who are susceptible to being radicalised, groomed or whatever, mm -hmm. not just far right but also Islamist uh, uh, peop, uh, uh, groups trying to radicalise and groom as well. And it's making sure that we strengthen those marginalised communities safeguard those, who individu those individuals who are vulnerable, but also the communities as well. And then, and then thirdly, stop the spread of these extremist ideologies as well. Thank you. That, I, mean, I look forward to reading the report. Um, 
Just finally, um, you, you mentioned online as well. What progress are you making in removing extremist content from um, online social media platforms? That's a really important question. So the, the criteria for ass assessing the success of the online hate crime, for example, shouldn't just be prosecution of brought. Because what they do very effectively is take things off uh, that are currently online that are, that are offensive or, or, or extremist, um, but also help any victim as well, giving them assistance and help as well. Um, uh, Google, YouTube, and Facebook uh, both understand the seriousness of this issue and, and are taking steps. They've, they're designing algorithms, they have, they have algorithms that, that, that can see some of this stuff taking place. They're also more responsive now to the police having conversations. The real challenge, though, is that is the non-responsible corporates, those who have ISPs outside of our country where we've got less locus. One of the things the Home Secretary did was, wait, wait, he went to Silicon Valley, and he spoke to a number of the global companies there to put pressure on them um, but we've got to make sure we continue to evolve to find, because, because people are finding new ways to get this stuff online, we will continue to evolve to find quicker ways to get it offline, but also to make sure that ISPs are quicker removing stuff that's clearly extremist, clearly used as propaganda by the far right or, or Islamist uh, extremists to, to radicalise people. Okay, I'm out of time, but yeah, hopefully we can Thank talk you. more. Thank <coughs> you.